Pero what happened? Hello, class. Good evening. How are you doing? Hello, How's everything? Teacher. How's I'm everything? doing good. What about you? I'm having some food. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad you're having food and, and enjoy it. Yeah, I'm doing really good. Thank you so much for asking. How was your weekend? Long weekend, as a matter of fact. Mm. How, how was it? Mm. My long weekend. You say that because yeah. you you think we didn't study on Friday. <laughs> we didn't. But you I, did. I yeah, but I'm in my case I didn't stop learning English. So I I didn't stop. I was studying, I was busy doing the same. And um fortunately for most of the employees over here that they are working in the El Pedregal, the most of them didn't go to work on Friday. But in my case, I did go work. Ah, okay. I see. So El Pedregal, is that a factory or what is it? Yeah, it's a manufacturing factory. Ah, nice. Okay. Well, so, but you have a job, which is good, you know? Yeah, I feel good. That's, that's really I'm something thankful. positive. Yeah, thank you. That's correct. Well, thank you guys for joining in on time. I really hope you guys are doing great. And uh, I was just checking on the results and I want to congratulate you because I can see that most of you already finished the first two um, sections. So class today, it's session number five, but we're going to start section number three. Okay, So that's the difference between session and section. Sections are the one we are studying. So basically, today is number five, cl class number five. Welcome to those who just joined. I can see we are already um, 20 connected. So I would like to start with this like very like quick reflection. As you can see, I have these characters on the screen. Quick question, do you know the name of the movie? What is the movie's name, class, where we are shown these characters? Emotion. They are emotions, yes. And then the movie, the movie's name, do you know do you remember? No? <clears throat> okay. Well, oh, the movie's the, you you didn't see the movie. Okay, it's okay. The movie's name is Inside Out. That's the movie's name. And then um well, let's do something. Let's do a really quick exercise. I want you to um see these pictures, these characters, and tell me which one best you know represents how you feel at this moment. Today is the first day of the week, right? It's Monday, and uh, so what is the, what is the character that best represents you at this moment? <laughs> Any volunteer, one volunteer or two volunteers? Uh huh. Go ahead, Robert. I'm gonna choose the first one, the red one. Would you explain to the class why you have chosen that? He looks uh, mad or something like hungry, and in that way I feel like that because uh, today is Monday. We usually, I usually, I don't like to work. We we don't like to work each Monday of every week. But what can we do? We gotta work as you as you was telling us before. That's what we have to do. But I think tomorrow I'm gonna be like the the next one that is that is right next to him. I think it's like purple or something like that. That's that's fear. Fear. <laughs> Uh-huh, but we are going to be, I don't know if I'm going to be mad or fear or happy. I'm going to be struggle myself. Okay, it's okay. Class, believe me, the reason that I, I, that I do this to ask you about how you feel, maybe you're not going to share with me because... Uh, you know, we're not going to spend the whole time talking about emotions. But once again, it's important that you guys feel like... um here you th that you feel present in this class and uh you try to control your emotion right 
when, whenever we um, are focused in, in our objectives, in our you know, goals, and our emotions are balanced, you know, it's easier for us to learn and understand you know, whatever you know, we are doing. So that's why I wanted to break the ice by doing this very, very quick exercise. So all of these are joy, sadness, fear, anger, and disgust. This is represented. Before I move on, I would love to start today's session with a very quick announcement. And that would be that we're going to have class uh, classes the whole week. Because there was a very, like, quick change, which is the we're going to have classes from Monday to Friday. Because I don't know if you saw it, but uh, they announced it already on in the WhatsApp groups. Uh, the ending for this course was scheduled for December 14, I think. So it was moved. It's not going to be on the 14. It's going to be until the 12, which means that we need to have two sessions prior that week. And that's going to be December the 1st and the 8th. Therefore, this coming Friday group, we have classes. Okay. So just keep that in mind in case you in case you didn't have this plan or you need to write it down or write a friendly reminder for yourself, do it so you don't forget. We're gonna remind you throughout the week too. Okay. All right. So let's see. Let's start talking about the topic. Um what is section number three about? Can I have a volunteer to read the name of this section, please? May I take your order? Thank you so much, Alfredo. Appreciate it. May I take your order? Very good. So that's the name of the section. And we're going to start by reviewing. Well, this is the objective. I don't know. Let me see. I'm going to choose one. Walter, can you help us reading the uh, class or the lesson objective, please? In this session, participants listen to a conversation uh, between two people decide where to go for dinner, walls, suit us, the suit too. Neither and Aether will be introduced. All right. So then let's focus on these grammar structures. Words like, uh, like it says here, we're going we're to have like so, we're going to have so, we're going to have to, neither, either. So this is today's focus. We're going to learn how to use each one of them. So the first one is so, to, neither. Yes, you can say with me, neither and either. Maybe you already have an idea as to how it is used, but we're gonna make some exercises. We're gonna practice together so we understand, you know, the correct structure. Okay. The purpose of using these words is to show agreement or disagreement. Okay. That's basically key on this 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 lesson okay so let's move on let's start by checking uh, them into a conversation okay so please help me to you know let me embrace this to complete or to exercise uh to complete this exercise okay let's see here's the first one let's see i need jo jeff and bob two volunteers who wants to volunteer <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate your participation. I have Dennis and David. Dennis, you'll be uh, Jeff, and David Alberto is going to be both. Okay, so let's do it. Uh, okay, three, two, one, go. Hey, would you like to go out to dinner tonight? Sure. Where do you want to go? Well, what do you think of Indian food? I love it, but I'm not really in the mood for it today. Yeah, I am not either. I guess it is a bit spicy. Mm, how do you like Japanese food? Oh, I like a lot of. I do. 
Who and I know a nice Japanese restaurant near here. It's called Iron. Iron. Oh. Oh, I always wanted to go there. Terrible. Let's go. All Thank right. You so much. It's okay. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm going to go over some a uh, few words. So you can write them down in case it's you know you need to. I strongly suggest doing it. Let's see the first one uh, here before we get start the discussion about how to use either, neither, so and 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 two is the pronunciation of this one. Let's see this word. It's really important that we understand how the th works. So you are you guys are intermediate level, right? Therefore, I would like to assign a very quick, um, you know, homework. If you can investigate about th sounds, okay, this is important that you understand when you are in this level because, um, I don't know what your plans are. Maybe in the future, if you want to use the language to work. You know, to speak, to talk, to communicate with other people in your job, or you want to apply for another another opportunity, the th sound becomes something really essential to study. How do you make the th sounds in this in this conversation? So you just you just can listen to me. It's like, what do you think? What do you think? Think, think. In this one, the verb is think. How do I make that sound? Well, by placing my my the tone of my the tip of my tongue. You can see it like you can see it like when I say think, think. If I don't show the tip of my tongue, I might be mispronouncing it because it requires that you know placement of our tone and our teeth when we say think, think. It's not the same if I say thing or sing than if I say think. I don't know if you can hear the difference, but there is a difference between these sounds. The one we're making is think, which is th. That's why the homework is to investigate about th sounds. There are two of them, just, just FYI, boys and voiceless. So that's your homework. I'm not going to expand on this because it's going to be long, you know, voiceless sounds. But now you have the blessing of the internet, so you can go ahead and you know try to read a little bit about it. So once again, say it with me: think, think. I think. What do you think? Think. Like when you say thanks, you don't say thank. You say thank you, thank you. You don't say thank you. Uh, you don't say thank you. You say. Thank you. Th sound once again, and this is important for you to like try to um uh, eliminate, try to reduce the accent. Okay, so let's move on. What else I wanted to say about this conversation is the following mood. This one, I'm not really in the mood for mood. When you you are not in the mood for something, it's like you don't want to do it, right? I'm not in the mood. You know, my um, my emotions, my Balance and not, you know, uh, in the right moment, I think. What else? Spicy. Spicy, write it down. Spicy, like Mexican people love spicy things. Spicy. And let's see, that, that, that's basically it. And then the name of the restaurant is Iroha, as you said it. And then this one, wanted, wanted, wanted or wanted, wanted. Even you can say wanted. One it is okay because um, as as we go through the study of language, we understand that most of the time the end the letter the end sound becomes silent after uh, before a t like this one. That's another interesting homework that I would like to assign. If you if you want to do it, go ahead and do it. So you can say um, list of words where t be t be becomes become silent if you don't find anything just let me know but if you if you find some like something interesting send it on send it via whatsapp list of words where the t sound let's say t sounds becomes silent 
okay? You'll find some of them. One it is okay. Another one can be international, for example, internet and some others, okay? You know, those are tips that can help you because you are in the intermediate level, pre-intermediate, you, you have to know about this. So you sounds more natural. Let's move on. Be careful with this word, terrific. Because it's not the same if I say terrific than if I say terrible. Terrific has a positive connotation, positive meaning. But terrible is like basically the opposite, okay? So, so if if uh, Jocelyn says to me, hey, teacher, um, you know, would you like some tea? And, and then I say, yeah, sounds nice. And she can respond, terrific, terrific. But if she says terrible, that's going to be something inappropriate for you know, the conversation. Maybe a synonym for terrific is going to be awesome, outstanding, love it, you know. Yes, this type of things. So just be careful on this pronunciation. If you if you don't mind, just say it with me. Listen to me. Terrific. Terrific. Just say it. Terrific. 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 Exactly. Terrific. Terrific. That's our word. So basically, these are the things that I wanted to point to point it out. Just just go ahead and, and say one more time. And I would love to hear two more participants to volunteer. So who wants to volunteer? Raise your hand. Roberto, thank you. I just need one more. Robert, and then who else? Just one more. Maybe a girl, because I haven't heard any anyone so far. Who wants to go ahead and help Roberto? Or maybe we should choose Roberto. Roberto, tell me then. I don't know, maybe one number. Oh, Jaime is there. It's okay. Jaime, you can help us out. Yeah. So Roberto is going to be then Jeff, and Jaime is going to be Bob. Let's do it like this. Okay. So three, two, one. Let's do it. Say, would you like to go out to, the, to dinner tonight? Sure. Where do you want to go? Well, what do you think on Indian food? I love it, but I am not really in the mood for it. It's today. Yeah, I know either. I guess it is a bit spicy. Mm, how do you like Japanese food? Oh, I like it a lot. I do too. I and I know a nice Japanese restaurant near here. It's called Hiroa. Hiroa. Oh, I always wanted to go there. Terrific. Let's go. Yeah, good. I like it. Yeah, terrific. Like with the exclamation mark, terrific. Let's go. Let's yeah. go. Let's go for a couple of beers. Terrific. Terrific. It's Monday, but no, no, no problem. Terrific. Now, let's see. Now let's focus on grammar. Thank you. Thank you so much for your participation, class. I really appreciate it. Uh, so be the one who wants to speak more than me, okay? But then uh, now observe the use of to, the use of neither in this conversation, okay? And tell me how it is being used. What do you see here? How do they use to? How do, we, how do they use neither or either? If you know, if you see them, just let me know. I'm gonna start by helping with the first one. So let's look for the first one. Neither, either, two, or so, those are the ones, those are our words. Let's look for them. First line, there's nothing there. Second line, nothing there. Third line, no. Fourth line, no. Oh, here we have one. I am not either. So my question is, what is this expressing? Agreement or disagreement? Do you know the word agreement? I think this is key in this topic. Agreement. Uh, agreement. These are uh, 
agreement. Basically, the one we're just gonna focus on today is in this one. But then what is what is it expressing? I love it, but I'm not really in the mood for it today. Today. Yeah, I'm not either. What is it expressing? What is it saying? That Jeff wants to go to the Indian restaurant or not? Um, I can say my own words. Yes, please. Because Bob say he loves that, but he, he don't feel like in the mood for that at that point. And then Jeff, Jeff say the same. Mm -hmm. He's saying like he is in in the same mode like Bob, like Bob. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to yeah. say Bob. Bob. It's like yeah. we say might be might be like we when we say in Spanish, yo tampoco. Exactly. Yes. Something like that. Uh -huh. Very good. I I like it because you just express you know a, a, a good point, and that's that's how it is. Now. If the person is saying yo tampoco, as Robert Beltran just expressed, this person is saying that I agree with your opinion, right? I, I also I also share your opinion, right? What you said for me, it's you know also acceptable. Now, um, is there any other way to say to express the same idea that is not I'm not either? What do you think? That's my question. So if I say, listen to me, please, and, and please tell me if you don't understand, because I want this to be clear. If I say, I'm not really in the mood for it today, or let's change the, the sentence. So it's like, so let's make it more like contextualized. If I say, I'm not, I'm not what? I'm not happy with this class. How do you say? How do you express the same thing? I'm saying, I'm not happy with this class. If I, if you say, I'm not either, you're saying that you're not happy with this class too. But then how do I express the same idea without using I'm not either? So that's my, that's my question. Do you know? Yes, in my case, I would like to say like, I'm not into that. Or you can put the 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 might be one action that you are not into mm -hmm. okay so what about if i say um if i want to use neither look at this one or if i want to say instead of either i say neither how do i use neither that's that's you know my my big concern concern here how do i use it do you know? It's more, yeah, I know it's, it's easier than the first mm -hmm. one. You just have to say, I just have, I just gotta say, me neither. Oh, I like me neither, me neither. It's, it's good. And thank you for bringing it up because me neither, it's okay. That is a little bit informal, but you can say me neither. But then what is the formal thing that we're looking for? That's one that we're looking <laughs> for. Have you seen the videos? Know. Have you seen the videos, class? Nobody has seen this. Because let me write it down because Robert Beltran is he is he's right. I can say me neither, and that would be me neither. Me neither is informal, but I can say that me neither. I, of course I can say, but there is this way, which is really, I would say, formal, you know, and it's really acceptable, and that's how we speak when we are not speaking to our friends, like more like in academic context. So what is that, that the one that I'm trying to get? You know? What's the one? You think neither, you think neither. No, it, it's, not, it's not a problem if you don't know, but because I want to know if you already knew it, but then I'm gonna explain this in a minute. We need to focus in the auxiliary verb, okay? So if I ask you guys, if I say, I'm not happy with my phone, I'm not happy with my, um, I'm not happy with my salary. So 
what is the auxiliary that I'm using in this sentence? Do you understand the word auxiliary? So this is key. I'm like making an emphasis on this because it's key. I'm not happy with my, nobody think is happy. I'm not happy with my salary. I wanna make more money, but then I'm not happy with my salary. Even I wrote it with capital letter, let's say lowercase. I'm not happy with my salary. So how do I make a sentence, you know, using neither to express agreement with this idea? That is the question. Robert, Robert already said me neither. Nice, but there's one more which wants to use the auxiliary. And what is auxiliary in this sentence? That's my question. What is the auxiliary? I'm, I'm gonna give one more sentence because I know you will tell me that what I'm looking for. Because the point is without, without me going to the next uh, slides that you understand it in context. If I say, I don't, I don't, um, Eat. I don't eat spicy food. Let's put it like, I don't need a spicy food. What is the auxiliary here? When I say I don't eat a spicy food, what is the auxiliary in this one? What is the auxiliary? Robert is saying it, but I, I don't hear it, Robert. What is it, Robert? Uh... Don't. Don't, exactly. Don't is the auxiliary. So the auxiliary is do, right? Do and does is the auxiliary for simple present. And what about in the one I'm not happy with my salary? What is the auxiliary? Our first, our first step class to understand this lesson is to know how to identify the auxiliaries. Okay, that is key. A spicy is the adjective, it's just the adjective. I'm going to write one more sentence, but I want you to participate because otherwise I might not be, uh, you know, I might be explaining, but I don't know if it is understood. So if I say this, I'm going to change now the, the, the sentence. I want to look at a different color. I can't. I can't wait to see you. Imagine, I can't wait to see you. In this case, we have, we don't have an auxiliary, but we have a modal verb. Sometimes can is considered also an auxiliary verb. In this, in this case, our auxiliary or is can. Here is don't. And in the first sentence that I gave you is, the verb to be. Did you know that the verb to be is also auxiliary? If you didn't know, now you know it. Because auxiliary verbs are helping verbs that connect ideas, that make us create either statements in affirmative or negative or even questions, okay? That's, that's how it works. Now, why am I saying this? Well, this is the point. Now listen to me. So if I say, I'm not happy with my salary, how do I use neither? Neither am I. I don't eat spicy food. Neither do I. I can't wait to see you. How do I say that? Following the same structure that I just gave you. If you are listening to me, you, you'll be able to see, you'll, you'll be able to identify what I'm, what I'm saying. I'm gonna say it one more time. Listen to me, please. I'm not happy with my salary. Neither am I. I don't need the spicy food. Neither do I. I can't wait to see you. I can't neither. Oh, that's that's a good one, but you're saying either. How do I use neither? Neither. Neither. Have you observed how it is how it is being used and the change I'm making? I'm gonna say one more time. I'm not happy with my salary. 
neither am I. I don't eat a spicy food, neither do I. I can't wait to see, or I can't wait to see. Neither, neither, neither can, can, neither, neither can I. Very good. As you can see, I'm making an inversion in the use of neither. So now I'm going to use either. I know you will, you'll understand this, but then if I say, I'm not happy with my salary, I can say, I'm not, I'm not either. So if I say not, I, see, I use either. You follow me? If I say, I don't either, I can't either. So either I use it with the auxiliary in negative because either is, it doesn't give us the idea that is negative connotation. All right, now. Let's analyze this a little bit deeper into, into a structure and into um, your own examples. When I erase this one, let's not focus on this conversation anymore. And let's take a closer look, you know, in this, the next slide. Let me see if I can change it. Yeah, I think I can do it. So what about here? This is the point. Now, with a, now you can see a, a clearer picture, I hope. You can you can ask me. Look, take a look at this one. I need a volunteer because uh, I want you. To, I want to hear how you pronounce it. Let's focus on the first column. Okay, not not let's focus on the on the on the second one. Only focus glance on this first column. I need. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna choose one girl to read. I have many of you who are with the cameras off. I don't know why. I just don't get it. Because I was told you guys need to be with the camera on, O N on, unless you have a problem with your camera, okay? But if you don't have the cameras on, that tells me that you maybe don't like the class or you don't want to be here because you haven't reported it, and you are not compliant with these or you know requirements. So you need to you know understand that because we need you to really like be here, be present, so you can. Also, you know, learn and don't misunderstand me. Don't misinterpret uh, what I'm saying. It's just because that is, that, is, that is expected from you. Now, let's focus on this. Brenda Diaz, Brenda, let's read this, this sentence and let's analyze it, please. I lie, I lie happens food a lot. So, so do I do too. Really, I don't like it very much. Thank you so much, I am Brenda. Grace Brenda. About you. okay. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I'm going to stop you here because I want to explain and I want you to also help me create your own examples. That's the point. So take a look at this one. I like Japanese food a lot to express agreement. So do I. So do I. Why do I say do here? Where did I get that do here? Who can tell me? Any volunteer who can tell me why do I say do in, in this sentence? Um, I guess it's due to we, we are using the uh, auxiliary because we are doing one of um, affirmation or that's what I think. Okay, 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 good. That's a good contribution. Any other idea? Okay, listen, um, the let's say the reason, let's put it like this, the reason that I'm using do, it, it has to do with Robert's idea, but I use do because I'm talking in present tense here. Like 
Me gusta la comida japonés mucho. So do I. A mí también. I do too. A mí también. Esa manera de expresar agreement. Voy a hablar en un ratito. ¿Ok? Porque claro, alguien me pidió que lo hiciera y se me había olvidado. Um, luego, pero ¿por qué digo uh, so do I? Y no digo este, otra frase. Primeramente, cuando hacemos un agreement con el uso del so, que es va a ser positivo. Remember that, positivo. Y uso el auxiliar del tiempo de la oración. Aquí es, I like Japanese, el tiempo es presente. Y nosotros ya sabemos que el tiempo en presente utiliza do y does. Right? We know that. Entonces, así lo utilizamos. Este, para expresar un agreement en affirmative. Para ver si se entiende el tema. Si mi, mi oración fuera así. I, vamos a hacer una oración inventada. I um, went to the movies. I went to the movies on weekend. O las, las, la Saturday. I went to the movie last Saturday. Clase, aquí estamos diciendo, yo fui a la, al cine el sábado pasado. ¿Cómo digo que yo también o, o yo, yo lo hice también? ¿Qué se les ocurre? Usando el so. So did I. Excelente. Nice. Lovely. I like it. So did I. So did. So did I. ¿Por qué me dijo Roberto Tid? Porque él ya entendió que el auxiliar que se, se debe utilizar en esta es el uso del did. Porque el did es past, es pasado. Y mi verbo principal es went. Por eso usamos did. Make sense? Yo también pude haber dicho, I did to, como el ejemplo de aquí. I did to. Si quiero expresar agreement a esa oración. Voy a poner uno más. Si yo digo, si yo digo, estamos en afirmativo ahorita. Si yo digo, para ver si se entiende el, los auxiliares. Sé que se sale un poquito del, del, del tema. Quizás si pongo los pasados y todo eso. Pero eso me ayuda a comprender por qué usamos este, el auxiliar. Voy, voy a hacer uno más. Vamos a ver. Vamos a hacer. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. Uh, celebrate, celebrate. I'm gonna celebrate. Voy a poner aquí abajito. I'm going to celebrate uh, my my uh, graduation, graduation next next week. Si usted estuviera en el mismo grupo y va a celebrar su graduación, ¿qué diría? I'm going to celebrate. So I'm sorry. Uh, so will I? Una otra opinión. Tiene la idea. Fíjese. So am I? So am I. Very good. So am I. So am I. ¿Por qué so am I? Porque ya nosotros hemos comprendido que el auxiliar aquí es el verbo to be. ¿Me dicen? So am I. Yo también puedo decir, eso, estamos aprendiendo, we're learning this formal y es formal y se escucha bien bonito les digo porque cuando ustedes de repente hey I'm gonna I'm going to celebrate my graduation next week so am I así no sale natural o yo voy a decir me too verdad informalmente de un solo me too pero en realidad la manera correcta y más aceptada más profesionalmente hablando es más formal es so am I so am I o puede decir I am too como el ejemplo del de segundo que tenemos. I'm crazy about dessert. So am I, or I am too. Así son, estamos expresando agreement o acuerdo a la idea clase en forma positiva. ¿Sí? Una última, porque alguien dijo, Will, voy a poner esto. Yo, la verdad que necesito que eso no se entienda para que en el ejercicio no les cueste y lo voy a, voy a poner uno con el Will. Vamos a ver uno siempre, siempre, siempre afirmativo. Voy a decir... Vamos a cambiar de subject. Ana María. Ana María. Uh, Ana María will, will um, get, will get, uh, Ana María will get a um, salary raise. Uh, salary raise. 
Vale. Ana María will get a salary raise. Yo escuché que alguien dijo eso, que a Ana María le va, va a tener un, un aumento de salario. ¿Cómo digo, cómo expreso de acuerdo a esa expresión, a esa oración? Yo también voy a tenerlo. ¿Cómo diría? ¿Cómo digo yo también? Soy chi. Soy. Pero ahí quiero, ahí quiero decir que yo. So. Es chi. ¿Cuál es el auxiliar de Ana María Wilguera Salary Race? El auxiliar. Mm. Will, yes. exactamente. Lo decimos Will. Nos diríamos so. Will. So we lie. 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 O, solo, ¿eh? o solo decimos I will too. Decimos la estructura de la otra. Will too. Yo también. Ok. Así funciona la primera parte de la primera columna. Si vamos a verla. Voy a borrar esto. I'm going to erase this. I'm going to switch to English. And I'm going to try to explain the second column. Ok. With these ideas in mind. Let's talk about the use of neither and either. And I want you to pay attention to this one because it's just, it follows the same, the same structure. The only thing is that now we're talking about negative ideas, all right? So if I say, I don't like greasy food, neither do I. You see how, how it changes? It's like, I don't say neither I do, it's neither do I. I make that inversion. But if I want to say the negative form, I say I don't either, because either remains in an affirmative way. So in order for me to make it negative, I have to say the auxiliary in negative. The way I say I don't either. That is expressing, you know, agreement. But if I have a different opinion, we have the choices, for example, and the first one was really, I don't really like it very much. And the second is, oh, well, I like it a lot. In this case, it's expressing a disagreement on the on the idea expressed, previously, previously expressed. Okay, take a look at the second one uh, here, please. I'm not in the mood for Indian food. Neither am I. Am I because it's fair to be. Or oh, I'm not either. Why did, did I use either? Because I'm using not here. And then, <clears throat> but if it's affirmative, really, I am. And this is like to say the opposite idea or idea of what was expressed. I can't stand fast food. Neither can I. I can't either. You see? So this is how it is work. To see if it's being understood, I want to display the next, the next um, slide. And then uh, I want you to create sentences expressing agreement or disagreement. Just to, to like check if this is, you know, uh, being clear or if you start to understand in the topic. What is, or how do you express agreement if I say, I won't go to work tomorrow? If you're not going, what do you say? I won't go to work tomorrow, what do, what do you say? I go. I won't go to work tomorrow. What do you have? What do you say to express agreement with the idea? Let me write it down. So that 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 that'll help a little bit. If I say, I won't go to work tomorrow. What is the? How do you express? You know. Yo no iré a trabajar mañana. ¿Cómo dicen yo tampoco iré? De una manera corta, usando neither. ¿Cómo lo, cómo lo diríamos? Hey, I won't go. I'm sorry, Dí, sé, dígale una vez más, por favor. I do too. I won't go either. I won't, I won't, I won't either. Sí, solo es eso. El do no se, no se ocupa aquí. Podemos decirlo así. I won't, como alguien lo dijo por ahí, either. I won't either. Solo utilicé, either. solo utilicé el, es, el auxiliar y el either. Miren, I won't either. I won't either. Pero si quiero usar el neither, tendría que decir neither, ¿cuál? Neither, a ver, neither. 
Neither. Ayúdame. Help me, please. Neither. Neither. Won't I? Neither. I'm sorry. Neither. 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 Work. Neither. I am. Neither. <laughs> Observen bien. Por eso que yo le estoy tratando de, de explicar eh, la auxiliar, ¿verdad? Así que ustedes presten atención al auxiliar, Dios. Si el auxiliar es won't, es porque aquí este won't lo he puesto en forma contracted. ¿Cuál es la forma completa? Clase, la forma completa es will not. ¿Sí? Si es will not, esa es la forma completa de won't. Con esta idea, ¿cómo diría entonces usando el neither? Neither will I. Exactamente. Good. I like it. Neither will I. ¿Sí? Porque tenemos que usar el neither, entonces mi, mi auxiliar el will va a ir en afirmativo. Neither will I. Pero si uso el either, ahí lo pongo en negativo. Uh -huh. Pregunta. Bueno, cualquiera, de las dos. Ajá, cualquiera de las dos está correcta. Las dos. De es la... decir, digamos, neither do I o I don't either. Este, vaya, si estamos hablando en el contexto, en la, en la oración de aquí, las dos son iguales. Las dos son iguales. Las dos tienen el mismo significado. En mi ejemplo era futuro, ah, ¿verdad? Pero aquí lo mismo significan las dos. Porque está más fácil el I don't either, porque solo le agrega después de... de la solo le agrega el either. Sí, ah, ¿no? sí, sí. Pero imagínense, vaya, pongamos el, el, el contexto, Alfredo. Que este, usted le dice a, a, a un su amigo gringo, y yo, no sé si una amiga, y le dice, hey, you know... I don't like, I don't like what? Les llamo una comida. I don't like lasaña. Este, y, y viene la persona y le dice, neither do I. Y no se lo aprendió. Usted no se lo sabía que era I don't either. Nunca escuchó el don't. Va a creer que le dijo que sí le gustaba. Entonces, yo les recomiendo a tu, para todo que se, se queden con una que usted las dice más fácil, pero entendamos la otra. Me dicen, es como lo siguiente. Yo recuerdo que en la universidad nos decían siempre, aprendan slang. ¿Saben qué son slangs? ¿Han escuchado la palabra slang? Slang. Uh -huh. Slang son caliches en inglés. Slangs. Tienen los slangs en inglés. Porque de repente sale, sale ahí alguien hablando así como slangs. Que es un montón de calichada en inglés. Es, pero no la utilicen. No es lo mismo les digo a ustedes. Es, aprendan lo que les, si les sienten que es más fácil. Y para que lo utilicen, pero la otra parte, eh, aprendan, pero si no están tan cómodos, no lo utilicen. ¿Por qué digo eso? Fíjense, porque cuando hacemos el uso del neither, así como el uso del so, hay una inversión, como que si fuera una pregunta. No, no decimos neither I do, decimos neither do I. No decimos so I do, decimos so do I. Por eso creo que ahí viene la confusión. No, espero que pues, más o menos se vaya entendiendo. Vamos a hacer un par de ejercicios ahorita. Para, y si no, me gustaría que levanten la mano. Voy a dejar de compartir ahorita y eh, sean sinceros. Be sincere. Eh, no se ha entendido. Yo no tengo ningún problema. De hecho, el, esta semana el tema principal es esto. Estoy explicando ahorita. Uso de neither, uso de either, uso de, del to, del so. Y eso va a ser pan de bastante y los modales esta semana, porque esta semana, como un reminder para todos, este, solo tenemos el enfoque de el, un section number three, plus tenemos el, el meter, que es un examen medio. ¿sí? Entonces, eh, clase, me, me gustaría que preguntaran o también que formularan sus preguntas, así ya eh, usando el, la... la Preguntas u, u oraciones usando el, el punto de gramática. Y, este, y lo discutimos. Parece. Voy a dar un tiempo. Tenemos unos cinco minutos para ver sus ejemplos o sus preguntas. Voy a poner la otra slide, que es esta. O comencemos con esta, para ir más o menos digeriendo. To and so. Es la primera parte. Creen ejemplos como esta. Primero usen el to y luego con el so. Si quiero usar una de las otras, crear una con las otras, it's okay, do it.
Vamos, pensemos en unos ejemplos. Si no, si no, se, pensemos en una oración afirmativa y luego pensemos en cómo expresamos acuerdo. ¿Sí? Hagan su mejor intento. Si no se comprende, vamos a hacer un par de ejemplos más para que se vaya comprendiendo. ¿Ok? Veamos. Les doy unos cinco minutos para que piensen, o un poquito menos. ¿sí? Voy a poner Alfredo adelante, Alfredo. Vaya, en, entonces tú y so significan también. ¿no? Sí. Las estructuras, las dos expresan la misma idea. De, expresan un este, porque no solo nos vamos a quedar que significan también, porque pues vamos, a, vamos a saber que soy y tú tienen muchos más significados, muchísimos más. Entonces, por eso que vamos a entender en ese tema que tú y so expresan acuerdo en este contexto de esa estructura. Es decir, expresan que están de acuerdo con la idea expresada, eh, acá la redundancia. Ajá, entonces, este, aquí. Pero sí, una definición, una traducción podría ser también en el contexto. ¿Tiene alguna idea, Ajá. algún ejemplo? Ajá. Mm, mm, mm. Vaya, es que si sí, fuese así o como yo pienso, sí, por lo menos en la, en la segunda le dice que, que él ama el pay de manzana, eh, en la primer respuesta dice eh, yo también va según yo y sí. en la segunda también yo es lo mismo cabal cabal Ajá, sí. pero no sé si se podría traducir así fíjese no sé, que usted, usted puede decir yo también en las dos yo también lo que hay que entender este clase es que la estructura va a cambiar si usamos el do tú el tú al final, si usamos el so, el so al principio. Pero el, en español significan lo mismo, lo mismo en las dos. El mismo significado tiene. Teacher. Sí. I have an example. Ok, thank you. I can, I can drive a car. I can too. Also can too. Mm -hmm. So, so can... I can too, or so can I. Ajá, muy bien, so can I. Excelente, very good. That's the one. Sí, así es, como lo acaba de decir. Expresó acuerdo. Estamos claros de que lo que estamos haciendo es este, de una manera individual, porque no, cuando yo digo I'm hungry, se espera que alguien más diga I am too o so am I, ¿verdad? No se va a decir I am hungry, usted se va a decir también I am too en so am I, porque esas son respuestas, son respuestas a la expresión. Entonces, vamos a ver en el chat que tenemos. Roberto trae inglés, inglés este, caliche. <ríe> Vaya, I ain't gonna pay. Eso es, I am, vamos, formalmente sería como, I am not going to pay. Neither. Ahí le tendríamos que quitar el ain't. Porque el neither es negativo, Roberto. Sería, uh, neither am I. El ain't no, no podría entrar en ese momento porque si digo neither ain't, estoy usando doble negativo. Y usar doble negativo me cambia el significado. 
Y eso pasa en, también en español. Este, o en inglés decimos, I don't have, te digo, I don't have nothing. Entonces quiere decir que sí tengo algo. Sí, porque sería, no podemos usar dos negativos. Solo sería, neither am I. I. En el cambio, en el segundo, habría que poner, I am, si decimos I ain't, pero sería either. Conclusión, no podemos usar neither con ain't, porque en ain't es negativo. Sería, I ain't either. No, I ain't neither. ¿Sí? Sí, entonces, esa sería la respuesta, Roberto. Es decir, se logró explicar. Luego, vamos con la otra. Tengo un par de minutos todavía. Tengo tres minutos. I, let's see, David. Dice, I am sleep. I am sleepy, sería David. I am too, so am I. Está muy bien. I am sleep, sleepy. Tengo sueño. I love walking, Judy. I love walking. I do too, so do I. Eso está perfectamente bien. I want to sleep. Ajá, si digo I want to sleep, las opciones son. Um, so, so do I. Esa es una. So do I. O I do. I do. Podemos poner, 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 ponerle coma. I do too. No sé de los que no han mandado. I love cheesecake. So do I. So am I. I am bored. I am too. Exactamente. Sí, ahí está. Así. Lo demás me gustaría preguntarles qué piensan del tema. Está confuso. Primera vez que lo escuchan. Este, está muy fácil. What's your opinion? Y si quieren que no hable español, pues yo, miren, este, cuando hable español yo lavo bajo mi responsabilidad. Debido a que, pues, intermedio no tendría por qué hacerlo. Pero yo también estoy aprendiendo. Y no es que lo sepa todo, pero al menos siento que ya he pasado esos temas. Y a veces no, no, no los entendía, así como me explicaba en español. Así que por esa razón yo lo hago. Eh, pero si ustedes dicen que hablemos inglés, lo hacemos. En lo personal, me gustaría que sean bien sinceros y se tengan la confianza en este espacio para que levanten su mano porque acuérdense que mi rol aquí es apoyarles en que se entienda la clase, ¿verdad? Si no, si lo estoy comuniendo más, mejor, mejor, este, pues, no tiene caso estar aquí. Make sense. Así, entonces, así que, porfa. Eh, veo que hay dos manos levantadas. Tengo un minuto. Este, Jenny, ¿tienes alguna pregunta? Sí, ah, sí. Eh, para mí esto es nuevo, eh, este tema. Entonces, a mí se me está haciendo difícil entender. Bueno, mañana, Jenny, vamos a retomar ese tema y voy a traerles más ejercicios. Y solo le pido que haga el esfuerzo de ver los videos y las explicaciones que aparecen también ahí como un adicional. Vea, vea los videos de la esta semana y pues eso va a ayudar un poco y mañana traigo más, más ejemplos yo. La otra pregunta, ¿cuál era? Eh, en mi caso, teacher, de igual manera, como aumentaba mi compañera Yuri, eh... Es tema nuevo para mí, pero igual este, no, no está tan difícil entenderla, entonces considero que no pasaría mucho. Bueno, excelente. Me alegra escuchar las dos versiones. Este, yo sé que lo vamos a manejar. Y ya, bueno, miren, seamos honestos. En, el, en la vida real, solo me too decimos a veces. Me neither y me too decimos. Me neither y me too. Y ahí nos quedamos, ahí nos casamos. Con él porque así hablamos de informal. Pero fíjense que ya es un, un ambiente un poquito más académico. Eh, este, ya no tanto va mi, mi, mi tú. Y sabía, usted puede hacerlo más, más con clase. Va, y eso lo hay. De mí no va a estar hablando. ¿Cómo? De mí no va a estar hablando. Vaya, entonces ahí pues cada quien, ¿verdad? Entonces... Mañana retomaremos el tema. Este, les pido encarecidamente que vean los videos. Please, I know you guys are busy. Sé que pueden estar ocupados. Todos estamos ocupados a veces. Habrá que hacer un poquito de esfuerzo. Lo que sí les voy a decir es, es lo siguiente. The effort pays off. ¿Se entiende? Te voy a mandar a chat y cuando no termino. The effort, miren. The effort pays off. Ahí lo investiga usted. Y pues nos vemos mañana. God's willing. Y seguimos hablando del tema. Cuídense mucho. Gusto de bueno, verlo. 
los que se dejaron ver, los que no, pues, arden sus cámaras, please, please. All right, see you tomorrow. Bye bye. Bye, teacher. See you tomorrow. Blessing everybody. Bye, teacher. See you tomorrow. Good night, teacher. Good night.